first thing people need to understand that will help them receive from the Lord swiftly is not to put their faith in the manifestation but to put their faith in the Lord Jesus now when you are praying for people or when people are trying to receive from the Lord many times what they do is that they are looking at the symptom and they are waiting for the symptom to change and they think it's when the symptom change that something happens because they are looking at the symptom they are channeling their energy to that symptom and so the symptom becomes stronger and stronger and more real than it was because where you focus on is where you empower so many times when you are taking declarations people are focusing on the sign they are not focusing on the master if people will turn their faith to god away from what is happening their healing will be swift somebody may be deaf and he can't hear and when you are saying be healed the person is checking to see whether he can pick a sound that focus on sound becomes a distraction and it misses the power of god when they are saying be healed your attention is not the ear your attention is the master somebody has a growth you are saying growths are dematerializing and the moment he or she hears growth he rushed he or she will rush to where the growth is and start checking whether the growth is reducing that's a distraction when they say growth be healed what you are pursuing is the word the word that went forth that is the word that carries your healing so you catch the word the moment you are able to catch the word the growth will respond on its own accord when you turn from the word and you focus on the growth you will miss the word and the growth will remain so many times people have faith to be healed but when they come into a meeting they channel their faith in the wrong direction they channel their faith to the challenge instead of god and because their faith is on the challenge nothing positive is coming from the challenge every positive thing coming from the lord they miss it let me show you how god healed the israelites in the old testament in exodus 23 verse 25 this was the lord speaking to the people of israel now they had real challenges because faith is not denial of fact it is actually the refusal of fact to dominate you so they had real challenges and god did not overlook it but here was what god gave them he said and ye shall serve the lord your god and he shall bless thy bread and thy waters and he shall take sickness away from thee that means when an israelite is sick his focus is not the sickness his focus is service as he focuses on service god focuses on the sickness but today when somebody is sick he focuses on the sickness and ignores the service no matter how much you focus on the sickness you may have enough faith to be healed but so long as your focus is on the sickness you can never be healed so god was teaching the israel the dynamics of dealing with sickness he said i know you are sick i know there is sickness in your midst he said but your job is not to focus on the sickness he said if you focus on service me i will focus on the sickness so somebody comes for a meeting he has enough faith and he wastes that faith on his challenge but if you were an israelite that knows how to walk in health you know that every time you are sick that is the time to serve and the more you are serving the more the power of god is being released on your circumstance you see how these guys worked it was a formula god gave them that their focus is what determines the direction of power if their focus is wrong even if they have the greatest faith they can never see manifestation so when an israelite is sick he is very careful about what he focuses on even if he's dying he will try to do something for god no matter how difficult it is he will muster his last faith to do something for god because he knows that as he does this he gets his healing look at another scripture numbers 21 verse 9 they were being beaten by serpents in the wilderness i mean snakes were in their camp biting and dealing with them and god will tell them forget about the snake the cure is not the snake bite the cure is to look in. every time god wants to touch people he gets them to look in another direction you look away unto him 
That's when the power is released. He said, and Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if the serpent had beaten any man, see what the man does. The man is beaten by the serpent, but he turns his gaze away from the bite. And he said, if the man beheld the serpent of brass, he, is, he, he leaves. How can you be beaten with serpent and the first thing you are doing, you are looking for, where is the pole? Where is the pole? Where is the pole? No matter what happens, your attention is not how big is the bite? Where is the pole? Where is the pole? Because you know your salvation is not in the effort you are putting here. Your salvation is how fast you look at the pole. Because when you look at the pole, the power of God is released. Today, people come, God is moving. And instead of them to focus, they are wondering why they are not being touched. And they are trying by all means to get touched. Stop trying. The more you try, the harder it becomes. What you need to do is to focus on where the power is coming from. And if you do that, you will be shocked what happens to you the next minute. The second thing to focus on is the name of Jesus. Have you seen people who are in trouble? And they say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> I listened to Bishop David Oedeko once. He was traveling in the vehicle with his wife. And they had an accident. And the woman said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He said, once is enough. <laughs> See, you have to learn these things. These are spiritual dynamics. Now, when you are going through a challenge, sometimes it becomes a school of the spirit for you. Somebody can promise you something and then you go to the place of prayer and you say, in the name of Jesus this matter is settled. And you stand up, you want to go out. And then you, there is still anxiety in your mind. And then you want to talk again. Discipline yourself to stay with that name you said. And tell yourself, the name of Jesus has been declared. Stay there. Tell yourself, if I lose this thing, I lose it. But I will trust the name of Jesus. As you start building your confidence like this, a day will come, you will now begin to understand the power in the name of Jesus. The cure to your challenge is already a power that is already credited into the name of Jesus. The Bible said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it therein. They are saved. Many believers don't know. They focus on a lot of things. And you can use circumstances of life to train yourself. Then, for example, you want to pay your house rent. And you have 48 hours to go. And somebody promises you money. Do you know how... Every second of the day, your mind will be on that person. Every vibration on your phone, you are checking. You think it's that person. Every message, everything. The person literally dominates your mind. You know what you have done? You have channeled your whole faith to that person. If you know how the name of Jesus works, that's the way you will channel your faith to the name of Jesus. You will carry the name of Jesus like a weapon. When there is a challenge, you will step back and say, In the name of Jesus... And when you say it, it's enough. It's better you are swallowed up by that challenge than to doubt the name of Jesus. And you begin to practice it in little, little, little things. When you do it, a point come. Even if a mountain is standing before you, you say in the name of Jesus. The third thing you focus on is the presence of God. The presence. The presence. Listen, this is not a chemistry class. This is not a physics class. This is not an anatomy class. This is the gathering of the believer. The Bible said in Psalm 133 from verse 1 to 3, it said, Behold, how beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in harmony. It said, It's like the oil on the head of Aaron that runs through his beard down his skirt. It said, It's like the dew upon Mount Hermon. There! the Lord commands his blessings. When we gather together, there is something in our midst. The Bible calls it the shout of the king. You may not see it, but it doesn't mean it's not there. It says, wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. On one day, Jesus was ministering and the power of God was present. Luke 5, 17. The power of God was present to heal. When we gather, 
there is something about our atmosphere. In Exodus chapter 13 verse 21, he said when Israel left Egypt, he said the presence of God went with them. Everywhere the people of God gather, the presence of God tabernacles there. And that presence is not there for formality. It's not. I read for you already in Psalm 105 verse 37. It said there was none feeble amongst their tribe. When you are sensitive to God's presence, see those things you feel. It's not for emotion's sake. When the power of God is running on you, it's reconstructing your body. But you need to know it so that when you sense God's power, you begin to bring administration. You don't just sense it and say, ah, ah, and you fall down. No! When the power of God comes on you, sometimes you begin to think on what you want. That power that is on you is like electric current. Your thought will become a conduit. The power will enter it. So when the power of God comes on me, I start seeing the ministry grow. When the power of God comes on me, I start seeing myself functioning in the anointing. When the power of God comes on me, I start seeing myself making progress. The moment I begin to think it, something happens. That's why in Ephesians 3.20, it says God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that is at work when we come under the canopy of god's presence and the power of god comes down the power is looking for channels it can enter your thought and everything you are thinking at that time the power animates it that's why we labor to bring the presence we don't bring the presence so that we can enjoy it we bring the presence because in the presence is the power that animates the purposes of god when the power of God comes on you, that's when you talk. Many people talk when they shouldn't talk. When I sense the power, I don't keep quiet. In the name of Jesus, I'm ten times better. I am going forward. No power on earth can stop me. I will not die but live to proclaim. Because I know everything I say at that time, the power will animate it. This is why the presence becomes important. Some of you are in a meeting. When the power of God comes down, you are quiet. You are wrong. You are wrong. Bartimaeus knew this. When they told him Jesus was passing by, he heard people shouting and he said, what is going on? They said, Jesus, the son of David is passing. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. Because when the presence of God is around, anything is possible. But the things that are possible are at the mercy of your thought and your words. That's why men don't keep quiet in the presence. When the presence comes, that's when to think. That job that is not moving, that house project that is not being completed, that growth that is not going, suddenly when the power comes, you just begin to see it go. You begin to see the house rise. You begin to see the business move. And those things you are seeing, they will begin to be animated. One week later, somebody throws to you and says, I want to partner with you. It was your thought through the power of God that brought that person. The person is not doing what he wants. He is being controlled. You imagine those things, you meditate those things, you think those things, and suddenly they are animated. This is how people receive their healing. It's either by the word, or by the authority of the name, or by the administration of the presence of God. When these three things happen, when the word comes to you, or the name of Jesus is used to proclaim your deliverance, or the energy of God is on you, you have to take quick action quick. This thing is for both those who minister healing and those who trust God for healing. You've got to take quick action. And there are four actions you need to take. Number one, don't wait for a change before you give thanks. The moment you give thanks, you have released your faith. Because God responds to your thanksgiving. So you may have a problem on your knee. The moment they decree healing, you jump up and you say, thank you, Lord, I'm healed. The moment you give thanks, you become the first recipient of that impartation. This is what people of understanding do. Number two, God may touch you before you give thanks. Don't wait until you are completely healed. Did you read Acts chapter 3 verse 8? The Bible said, the man was walking and limping. He was not completely healed but he was already running in the temple and giving thanks. Somebody is waiting that, no, this thing is just 40%. Let me wait until it's done. You don't know the technology. The moment you sense a change, you are jumping, you are giving thanks. 
And before you know what is happening, the same power begins to perfect your healing. The reason too many times, very few people are healed is because very few people respond. Your response is the sign that your faith is released. The moment you sense a change, sometimes you say, if you are healed, come out. Somebody is healed of deafness. He's still sitting down. You ask him, you say he's shy. And the moment he steps out of the building, the devil comes and says, you. So you, like this, thought you were healed. You are joking. And then the person will now say, but is it true that I'm healed? Before you know what is happening, seven more wicked demons come. And what was partial deafness becomes complete deafness. And then the person will go out foolishly and say, what these people are doing is not real. You don't know the technology. Because when you give thanks, you are made whole. Ten leprous people were healed. One came back and gave thanks and was made whole. Your thanksgiving is what perfects your healing. So it could be 30%, it could be 50%, it could be 70%. The moment there is a change, jump up and begin to thank God. And then he will perfect your healing. Number three. Don't wait until you are encouraged to testify. The man that was born blind in John chapter 9, from verse 8, the Bible said when people saw him, they were saying, is this the man? He didn't wait for them to complete it. He said, I am the man. I am the man. I am the one. I am the one. Do you know some people are healed? They are ashamed of testifying. If you don't testify, how will God take the glory? Did you read about the woman at the well? When Jesus ministered to her in John chapter 4, the Bible says she went into the city and told everybody, come and see the man that told me everything that I ever did. In Mark chapter 5 verse 20, when Jesus healed the madman of Gadara, the Bible said the next time Jesus came, he said the man testified in a Decapolis. He testified in 10 cities. And Jesus was glorified. When you don't have the culture of testifying, you can lose your healing. And then number four, the fourth action you should take. Don't go back to a sinful life. That God healed you is not a guarantee for you to continue sinning. If you were blessed by this message you just listened to, and you wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat the prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that He died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just said this prayer, please send us an email at info.ejmi.ng at gmail.com or visit us on our website at www.encounterjesus.cc to enable us to reach you and afford us the privilege of discipling you. God bless you.